did it happen or did it not happen? Okay, a veteran to debater, to Jay has taken on academics at all yeah, levels. Sure. Yet his heart remains at Hyde Park Speaker's okay. Corner. Let each speaker say his point. He can be found here most Sundays, challenging Muslims on their beliefs about Jesus. I will take care of the Christians, you take care of the Muslims. <laughs> all right, no problem. <laughs> My view is that um, a, a crucifixion happened, but it, it wasn't Jesus that was crucified. And there was, there's many um, historical sources that, in the, that actually um, uh, show that many Christians believe that uh, Jesus was not crucified. You ready? Yeah. Okay, let's go. The issue today is whether or not Jesus Christ died on the cross. You don't know if you're going to go off on a tangent and make no sense. You don't know if you're going to get a lot of cat calls. You have no idea how it's going to go on that particular day. You can't control it. Jesus himself speaks about his own death. He mentions it five times. Twice in Matthew, one in the book of Mark, and twice in the book of John. I believe in a loving and forgiving God, nor of a God who's so bloodthirsty that the only way he can forgive sin is not through his mercy. No, he needs blood sacrifice to forgive sin. The God of the Bible asks you to take nobody's life. The God of the Bible comes and gives his life for you. The God of the Bible did that 2,000 years ago. The God of the Bible, Jesus Christ, who came as a man, he was on the cross. He died for every one of you. It was his, his voluntary act. And even Paul himself, He's having arguments with other Christians who are denying that Jesus died. You've been to heaven? I have seen Jesus. And you've seen Jesus? Yes. Thank you very much. Bye bye. You don't the believe the Old the Messiah the old speaks death. about his own death. death. Because if Jesus had not been on the cross, then I'm damned today. We might as well tell tale and go home. The essence of Islam is submission to the absolute, to the divine. And that's where, where salvation lies, in submission to the divine, or at least a recognition of the divine. In Christianity, salvation lies through the acceptance of the blood of the Lamb. That is, is a completely different narrative than the Quran is giving. Who's right? Well, the Quran says, you make your choice here, and I'm going to let you know in the next world. Muslims also dispute the Christian idea of Jesus' divinity, the belief that he was God in the flesh. In fact, the Quran warns Christians against this. Desist, it says, God is one and Jesus is his servant. To say Jesus died on a cross, or that uh, Jesus was a little, that God was a little baby, or that God was died on a cross, or God was a little baby, this is a heresy. Um, and to say that Jesus was God, full stop, is also a heresy. A lot of Christians don't realize this. The Quran says that, that the, the heavens were re almost rent asunder, that the mountains were almost obliterated, that the earth almost shook at the idea that we would say that, that, that God had a son. In the Quran, it says that on the Day of Judgment, God will actually ask Jesus Christ, Did you tell the people that you were God? And Jesus says, You know what I said. You see everything I say and do. I would never say that. Glory to you. Transcendent are you. I would never say that. I have no right to say that. Zachariah King is a poet who runs an Islamic bookstall on Edgware Road. Priest in confession weep out through each town, omen sweet ground. This land will never suffer love again until my beautiful motley Maria is refound. His understanding of Jesus in the Quran influenced him to reject the Jesus of Christianity. Why aren't you Muslim? Why aren't I? I'm a Jew. Why You're a Jew? Why oh, I, I was previously Christian. Say Allah. Allah. Once I started to learn about Islam, and realizing that uh, 
You know, Jesus prayed, Jesus ate, Jesus went to the toilet, Jesus was born, Jesus had companions. All of these things that he went through pain, that he went through anguish, that he beseeched his Lord. These things are not befitting for me of God and therefore, therefore the Son of God. For Christians to believe that Jesus was God in human form is absolutely fundamental because um, it means that God understands us. God isn't some distant deity living in the glory of heaven. Uh, he can understand what it's like to be in pain, to be betrayed, uh, to be hurt, to be bruised, uh, to be bullied. God understands our situation. If Jesus was God, then who was supporting the world while he was supposed to be dead? Or, or um, if he was God, then who was he praying to? Free books. What doesn't work is that God has family. I can't believe that Mary can give birth to, to God. For God to be God, he has to be the creator and have and not 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 become part of creation. Both Muslims and Christians believe that Jesus will return to earth to restore justice to the world. They also believe that before he returns, an evil person or system called the Antichrist will have gained influence over the planet. The story of the Antichrist, I think, should uh, be made a film. Uh, the Islamic version of the Antichrist, not the other one. He's called the Antichrist or the False Christ uh, because he stands for everything which goes against Jesus Christ's message. So instead of love and mercy, the Antichrist stands for hatred and war instead of being devoted to God and, uh, and renouncing the world, the Antichrist stands for greed and exploiting the world and exploiting power, etc. In Islamic tradition, the Antichrist is called Dajjal. And a Dajjal really means the imposter, you know, the liar, the deceiver. Now, if you look at the word Dajjal, which means Antichrist in Arabic, the root word is to put pitch or tar over a mangy camel and what happens when you do that is the mange goes away it suppresses it like putting a uh, cortisone on eczema and then you sell the camel because it looks good and so the person buys it thinking it's a healthy camel and then a week later the mange re-emerges in the bible the book of revelation says there'll come a time when no one will be able to buy or sell without the mark of the antichrist 666, the mark of the beast. The main understanding of Muslim Antichrist prophecies is of an actual person. Vivid descriptions of his appearance and abilities can be found in the Hadith, the collected sayings of the Prophet Muhammad. The Prophet Muhammad said, every prophet has warned his people about the Dajjal, about the Antichrist, but he said, I will tell you something which none of the other prophets told their people, and that is that he has one eye. One eye. One eyed. One eye. One eye which will be damaged. There will come a person who would rule using brute force, tyranny, who would disbelieve uh, openly, who would uh, kill, maim and destroy anything and everything. He's the pitch man. He's the one who's, who's like pitching you this, buy this product, the seven deadly sins, lust, greed, pride, gluttony, right? The, the, you're really going to enjoy these. You're going to have a good time. He will do things that are beyond the ability of anyone. Uh, for example, by uh, cutting a man in two, it says. Right down the middle. <laughs> bring him back to life. I mean, after you witness such an event, it would be very difficult not to believe in such a person. Christ says, go and sin no more. I, you know, you're forgiven. Uh, the Antichrist says, there's no sins to forgive. Go do whatever you want. Both Muslims and Christians agree that Jesus will return to defeat the Antichrist. But whereas the Bible uses metaphorical language to describe the event, Islamic tradition gives a blow-by-blow -blow account of exactly what will happen when Jesus comes back.